It seems like the world is a mess and everything is falling apart. So in this video, I'm going to be covering that feeling where you feel discouraged and hopeless when you see the state of the world, but a part of you doesn't want to give up. You want to do something, something within you wants to move and act. So this video may not be entirely without controversy, because I'm pointing to the source of your experience, our experience of life. So proceed with caution. And what's going on is everything seems to be in chaos. It seems like nothing matters. It's all about money, everything, everyone is fighting, and it feels like we won't make it. The planet seems to be dying. Yet when we look at the numbers, we see that the world is better than it has ever been in terms of how we as humans are doing. But we live in a unique time in history because we have access to videos on horrible things happening to people, places, communities, animals, and our brain reacts to all this, and we have thoughts about what it means and how horrible it is. Now, this doesn't mean that everything is fine and we should just learn to ignore what's going on, because there's always improvement. We can always improve on the state of the world and everything else. So this is really about finding your path, because the best way I've found to live in this world is to find what resonates with me and to follow that one tiny step at a time, however small that may be, because it doesn't have to be a huge thing where you change the world, because that in itself can be discouraging because you see all these things happening and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to change anything. So then the alternative is to not focus on doing big things, but on taking small steps toward what interests you and what makes you come alive. Because it may be that you don't try to change the world in an overt way. Maybe you make a difference just by being who you are. Because a cashier in the store can make a huge difference in people's lives by how they act, how they are in the world, what they say, what they don't say. And the tone they say that with, the body language, everything else that we don't necessarily see or hear. But the real point of this video is that our minds are also a mess. The world seems to be falling apart, but we are also falling apart because we believe every thought we have and we feel our thinking. We don't feel the world. The world being a mess, we perceive that and we feel what the meaning we give to that if we think that the world is a mess, everything is going to fall apart, it's never going to be better. We feel that tension and frustration and whatever else comes with that. Now again, this doesn't mean that there's that everything is fine. There's a distinction between the external and the internal. This is why you can have a friend or a loved one who sees what what you see and knows what you know about the world, but they feel differently about it. That's because the thinking is different. So the thing is that you don't have to feel bad about the world being a mess. You don't have to be a mess internally, because it isn't true. It's a story that goes on in your head. So this is why I said in, in the beginning that this may not be for everyone, because this is really about seeing how you create your experience. It's easy to 
say that, oh, you don't care when you don't feel bad. And it's normal to care about something and to feel bad about it. But again, there's a difference between that and getting stuck in that bad feeling, getting stuck in your thoughts. Because when you're stuck in your thinking, you aren't paying attention to what you feel drawn to do, what makes you come alive. And it, it's, through, it's through that aliveness that you can truly make a difference in the world. So by being stuck in your mind, you aren't living the life that's right in front of you. So you can make a difference in the world without getting stuck in your thoughts. You can live in the present moment, which is simply about noticing that you have thoughts. You have all kinds of different thoughts and you have all kinds of different feelings that come with those thoughts. And you can see that you are not your thoughts, even though your mind may be overwhelming and it may be it may feel like your life is falling apart. You can observe that because you aren't your thoughts. Because if you can observe something, you don't have to necessarily be that thing. So this gives you some space. And you can begin to act from a place of resonance, peace, interest. Because when I work with people and they're distraught, I don't have to go into their story. I don't have to dive into their distraughtness, you could say. But I'm still present, I'm still listening to them. And I can, at the same time I can see that they're more than their thoughts. And there's a difference. So to summarize, some of the world is a mess. It doesn't mean we have to be, and we care about all this, so it hurts. We want better things, and we will always want better things. We will always want to improve the world. But at the same time, as we want the world to become more compassionate and loving, we can become more compassionate and loving within ourselves, to begin to notice our thoughts, and to begin to notice what's interesting to us. Because when you notice what's interesting, what makes you come alive, that's your internal guidance, guidance system, as I like to call it, nudging you on your path. So, what makes you come alive? That kind of reminds me of uh, a quote by Howard Thurman, where he said, Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what the world, or ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. 